Okay, so this may be the craziest thing I've ever done as someone who edits videos and runs a business. I'm trading in my M1 Pro MacBook Pro and I've just bought the new M4 MacBook Air, Apple's thinnest and lightest device. But is this device gonna be powerful enough to allow me to edit in Final Cut Pro and get all my business tasks done? This M1 MacBook Pro has never really let me down. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I'm switching this year for the first time to a MacBook Air, and we're gonna see if this can keep up with the trusty M1 MacBook Pro. So let's get into it. Hey, welcome to the video. So this is my new M4 MacBook Air. And as someone who edits videos, uses Photoshop, runs a business, you are probably already screaming in the comments, why are you getting a MacBook Air when you should just get the new M4 MacBook Pro? Well, there's quite a few reasons. Uh, well, reasons why I've done this anyway. The main reason is I wanted a machine that was actually very, very lightweight and thin to carry around. You see, at the moment, we have the Editor's Keys office in Manchester. I'm down in Cornwall setting up our Cornwall office and manufacturing plant here. And at the moment, I'm working from a few co-working spaces, which means I'm carrying around my laptop every single day. Now, the M1 MacBook Pro isn't like crazy, crazy heavy compared to some Windows laptops, but it is a bit of a beast of a machine. It's quite thick. It weighs about 1.6 kilos. This weighs about 1.2 kilos. So in your bag, when you're carrying around this every single day, that does actually make quite a big difference. So the weight was really the main reason I thought about upgrading this year. And then in addition to that, this has the M4 chip. So in my mind, I'm thinking, look, I know this isn't gonna be as fast as the latest M4 MacBook Pro but how good is this gonna be for video editing? Can I edit on this? That's the main thing. Lewis is doing a lot of our video editing up in Manchester, so I'm not editing as many videos as I used to, but I still do need to edit video, work in Photoshop and things like that. I've been quite surprised by how capable this is as a video editing machine, and I'll show you some more of that in a bit. But there's a few things you do lose when you get the MacBook Air, so let's talk about that. So first of all, on the side here, we have the power and two USB-C ports. On the other side, we just have a headphone jack. So you do actually lose a couple of things here. On the MacBook Pro, we have uh, an HDMI port, we have USB-C, and we have an SD card slot. Now, on this side, we have two USB-C ports. I do think, actually, already, I'm gonna miss the SD card slot. I know you can uh, plug in everything with USB-C now, but it is quite handy to have that SD card slot, so I think I'm gonna miss that. It also has HDMI out, which, to be honest, I've never ever used, so I'm not too fussed about that. Now, that's the externals, but what do you actually lose on the inside? What have I noticed already from switching to the MacBook Air? Well, first of all, the screen. The screen is actually slightly bigger here on the M1 MacBook Pro. It's a 14 inch compared to the 13.6 inch, I think, screen on the MacBook Air. Really, you can't see much of a difference. It also has ProMotion. That means when you're scrolling through websites, uh, editing video, it's gonna be a lot, lot smoother. Now, to be honest, I haven't seen a huge difference in this. I think if someone had switched my MacBook Pro's Pro display, uh, ProMotion off, sorry, I don't think I would really notice for like 99% of things. There's maybe been a couple of times on a couple of websites that I frequently use where I may have noticed if you'd have told me, but actually I thought that might be a deal breaker. It's really not. I, of course, if you could have promotion in the MacBook Air, yeah, I would of course have it. I'd probably pay 50 quid to add it, but I really don't notice it. And most of the time I have my laptop plugged into a monitor. The speakers in the MacBook Air are also very, very good. Not as good as the MacBook Pro, but still very good. Again, I use headphones mainly, or I use the speakers built into my monitor when I'm editing. One thing I would say though, is I think the actual display just seems a little bit high res. I don't know if it's the HDR, I don't know if it's the ProMotion, but certain elements, certain fonts, especially within Final Cut and other programs, look slightly lower resolution on the MacBook Air. And Looking at the specs, there shouldn't really be much of a difference, but I think it's to do with the quality of the panel. Let me know if you've seen that in the comments section below. All of these things aren't really deal breakers. As I've said, if you plug it into a monitor, it just kind of looks exactly the same. That's one of the thing that struck me. When I first plugged them in, I was like, mm, doesn't really feel any different. Have I made a good decision here because of that, or have I made a bad decision because it feels like I'm kind of using the same MacBook 
Pro that I was using before. But now let's open up some apps. Let's just show you some day to day. I'm not gonna do any Geekbench scoring or anything like that. I just wanna show you my real world examples, how it feels when I jump from this M1 MacBook Pro to the M4. Let's open some apps. Let's see how fast they open. So what I'm gonna do here is just open a few of the apps that I run on a daily basis, starting with Safari, opens faster on the M4. Now, Photoshop, this is what I use almost every day. And again, it opens slightly faster on the M4 MacBook Air. Next up, let's open up Microsoft Word, something that most of us use, I'm sure, on a daily basis. And again, only slightly, but it opens quicker on the Air. Final Cut Pro, the biggie, surprisingly opening quicker on the MacBook Air. So, just thought I'd jump in here. Those tests are pretty surprising, actually. I'm surprised that the M4 is so much faster than the M1 at opening apps. I mean, let's be honest, this is still blazing fast anyway. There's really no reason to upgrade it. It's like split seconds here and there. But it's nice to know that this M4 MacBook Air is snappier than the M1 Pro. Handy if you're in and out of apps a lot throughout the day. Okay, so now for the big one. Let's talk about Final Cut Pro and video editing. Final Cut Pro is what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Lewis in the office uses Premiere Pro, but I primarily stick to Final Cut Pro. When we just scrub through the timeline, there's no real delays as such. Sometimes when you do this on different computers, it can get paused or stuck. This is absolutely smooth as you like. You can start playing straight away and you're good to go. So in terms of effects, speed, playback, Playback quality, the M4, MacBook Air is rocking it. Now let's try exporting. So I've put the timer here on the left hand side. This is the M1 MacBook Pro. Let's export this quite big project that the iPad mini review. Full resolution, better quality, around a 15 minute timeline. Let's call this one the M1 uh, export. Let's do a little test. Let's start the timer. Here we go. And uh, this is going to take some time. This is quite a big timeline, as you can see, with lots of titles, extra videos, all in H.265. So let's speed things up a bit. As I mentioned, this is all H.265, 10-bit footage, 422, filmed on a Sony A7S III. Let's see, we're nearly done. And here we go. Okay, it's done there. You can see in the top right hand corner, share is successful. Six minutes and 33 seconds. Not a bad time. It's what I'm getting usually on average. Now I think it's time to test it out on the M4 MacBook Air and I'm expecting this to be a little bit slower. Okay, so we're on the M4 MacBook Air. I'm gonna export the exact same project from the exact same hard drive with the exact same settings. Let's just rename this on the best quality. Let's go to export, save this again to the SSD drive. Uh, this is a SanDisk SSD, super fast. And let's start this export. Again, massive files here, 10-bit. Let's speed this up and see how quickly the M4 MacBook Air can do. I'm expecting this to go slower. It is a fanless laptop, but at the moment, it does look like it's going through it a little bit quicker. Okay, and there we go, six minutes and 14 seconds, even faster than the MacBook Pro. Okay, wow, so the M4 MacBook Air is very, very slightly faster than my M1 Pro. That's quite impressive. Now, these are the kind of timelines I'm working in, maybe between five and 30 minute timelines. So the fact that I can edit in this just as smooth and then export in kind of roughly the same amount of time. Yes, this is a little bit quicker, but I think, to be honest, if I was in, say, a 10, 20, 30 minute timeline, I think the M1 Pro would still be a little bit quicker, but the fact that I've now got a super lightweight machine that's 600 quid cheaper than the equivalent M4 MacBook Pro and can export in similar times to my M1, that's pretty impressive. Now, of course, if you're spending a lot of time uh, exporting videos, then of course, go for the M4 MacBook Pro because that's gonna be a lot faster than this but I was super happy with the M1. I had no complaints there. So the fact that this little tiny machine can export quicker than my M1 Pro, I'm pretty impressed with that. That's pretty exciting. In the past, the MacBook Airs were a little slower compared to the MacBook Pros. You really could feel the difference. Now, 
I think if you've got a Mac M1, M2, MacBook Pro, and you jump to an M4, it's still gonna feel like a little bit of an upgrade from that M1 machine. So the color I went for, I know everyone's going for that kind of new blue color. I actually went for the gold this year, mainly because, I don't know if you can see, this is the kind of uh, space gray M1 MacBook Pro, which uh, they did darken. This is kind of silvery. This is the new gold. Now, I like this because, I don't know if you can see on camera, it, it's almost silvery. It's The colors are so muted these days that the gold one used to be a big shiny like gold ring color. This is so muted. This actually, I actually find this color to be really, really beautiful because in the UK at the moment, the trend is kind of these muted tones, these kind of stone colors, these light marble colors. That's the color that we're kind of doing our house out with. That's the color that I'm going for in the new Editor's Keys YouTube studio. So this gold color MacBook Air, I think looks really, really nice. I've never had a gold one before. I've always had the silver because that's all that was available. Now you can have space gray, but I'm not a huge fan of those dark colors that pick up fingerprints. This one is just subtly gold, but it looks more kind of cream than a gold. It's not that that kind of overly tacky Trump gold. No one knows keyboards better than editor's keys, well apart from me, but they're the best. So I really like this color. What do you think in the comment section below? Are you going for that new blue color? If you're thinking of getting one, or would you consider the gold as well? Okay, so let's round this up. Using this for a few days, I actually think I've potentially made the right choice. This is that thin laptop that I've always wanted. It's still a powerhouse, which is kind of crazy because it's a MacBook Air. And the quality of the screen, the keyboard, everything is top notch. The M4 chip just powers through everything. I think, I think, I've made the right choice. Yes, I am missing those SD card slots. Yes, I do think the screen is a little bit better in the MacBook Pro and I think I'm gonna miss that very slightly. But overall, I think I've made the right choice. Follow me on Twitter or uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube if you wanna see updates in the future about how this uh, is, is going maybe in three to six months. I'll let you know, have I made a bad decision? Will I be on the M5 MacBook Pro? Thanks for watching. Leave any comments or questions below and I'll see you in the next video.